a desert planet with twin suns. Why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Use my knowledge. Much to learn, you still have. Welcome back to Twin Sun Talks, folks. I'm your host, Jonah Liu. Thank you so much for listening, and welcome to our 100th episode. Uh, this is a huge milestone. I'm so excited to be able to commemorate this with y'all. Uh, we have a very special episode today. So Jeb is on once again, and he has challenged me to the rank of Grandmaster. If you haven't listened to uh, last Friday's ability to speak with John Duran, that's what happened then. And so this is the first time we've ever had this happen. So we decided to uh, commemorate 100 episodes of Twin Sun Talks uh, with this special uh, challenge episode. So I will, uh, this is a different format, completely different format than any other Rank of Master you've ever seen. And I'll explain that more once we enter the segment. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive into the Rank of Master. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the Rank of Master. So if you're new to the podcast, basically what the Rank of Master is, is a quiz segment that I typically give to my guests whenever they come on the podcast. It tends to be three questions that are um, trivia-based and every time you pass a quiz, you move up a rank. You start at youngling, then you move to padawan, then knight, then master. Once you're master, once you're a master, you can challenge me for the rank of grandmaster. And Jeb was our first ever master on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, he elected to challenge me for the rank of grandmaster last week. So uh, we structured a completely new quiz uh, to, to, uh, to accommodate for this special occasion, where essentially these are not trivia based questions. These are all very open-ended um and there's not really a correct answer what we're going to do is we're going to send off all of our answers anonymously to uh every other char uh, character, character every other person who's been on this podcast and has uh progressed to the next rank uh, uh or progressed a at least one rank um and they're going to vote on which answer they like more. I've prepared three questions within the confines of a specific sort of theme. Jeb has done the same thing. And we're both going to give answers to all six questions that we have prepared. And um, we're going to see who comes out on top. So um, Jeb, how are you feeling? Do you have anything to say before we dive into this? Um, not really. Um, feeling confident, feeling dialed, feeling ready. Um, yeah, let's just get right into it. All right, awesome. So uh, the the different categories that we have are a versus question where we kind of pin two Star Wars characters against each other and discuss who we think is going to win. A military strategy question where each of us kind of gave a lot of a, a detailed uh, scenario and we have to give uh, our reasoning for why we act a certain way in that scenario. And then the last one is a hot take, which we have to either defend or or oppose and give some reasoning behind that too. So, um, Jeb, in order to determine who goes first and who asks the first question, because we're going to start with the verses, we're just going to flip flop back and forth uh, mm -hmm. through all six. Uh, I suggest that we do uh, a rock off, as uh, some would say. But um, rock you, paper do, scissors, do rock do paper scissors, the, the ninety nine percent of which, people who call it that. Which is very, uh, it's very gripping for pot for, for a podcast, but uh, let's do it. So, ready? Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. That was so okay. delayed. Jeb, Jeb put paper. I mean, put. <laughs> gosh, I put this paper. Has been a long day. And Jonah Jeb put paper, put Jeb put scissors. So, <laughs> correct. Uh, are we doing two out of three, or is that it? Let's just do I that. don't know. Let's um, just do that. that that'll be the okay. So, exciting. Jeb, would you like to go first, or would you like to go second? I would like to go first. Okay. So what is your versus? I put Django Fett in his prime against Boba Fett in his prime. Very interesting. Okay. So let me think about this for a little bit. Um, okay. So I'm just going to talk through my answer for a little bit. So obviously Django okay. Fett and Boba Fett are virtually the same person on paper. That's obviously not the case in canon. But um, Boba is an unaltered clone of Django meaning that he is a DNA strand for DNA strand replication of Jango Fett as a person, much like his sister Omega, who's the female variation of him. Um, that being said, Jango Fett in his prime was a Jedi-killing maniac. 
Um, he was just extremely efficient. He was trained under the true Mandalorians. Um, and he was uh, pro uh, proficient enough in his fighting skills to attract the attention of one Count Dooku whenever he was a part of the Jedi Order. And uh, he was impressive enough in Count Dooku's opinion. There was a there was a giant massacre uh, on a planet that I don't entirely remember, but I didn't either. Um, it was a it was a giant massacre between uh, the true Mandalorians, which was the faction of Mandalorian that Jango was a part of, and a lot of Jedi. And this was actually set up by a rival faction of Mandalorians called the Death Watch, which we get to know in Clan the Clone Vizsla. Wars. Yeah, Clan Vizsla. and um, and essentially. Uh, Jango was the only survivor, but he ends up with his bare hands, single-handedly, or not entirely single-handedly, but he ends up killing a ton of Jedi, with Count Dooku being the only survivor and Jango Fett being the only survivor on the Mandalorian side. And Count Dooku actually elects to let Jango live um, and essentially just keeps him in mind. And so whenever sifo -Dyas comes, the, the age of sifo -Dyas comes around and Count Dooku ends up betraying sifo -Dyas and making uh or uh, um <coughs> excuse me commissioning a clone army in his name on behalf of the republic he enlists jango fett's help because he knows he's such a capable and ruthless fighter that an army made out of jango fett's would be extremely effective so in his prime jango fett was the most respected and feared bounty hunter in the galaxy uh obviously sporting beskar mandalorian armor now, if we flip over to Boba Fett, Boba Fett's very similar. I can't say that I know, <coughs> excuse me, as much about Boba Fett as I know about Jango Fett because I'm more of a prequel guy. But um, Boba Fett is extremely interesting because he had a lot more uh, of a like diverse mentorship than Jango Fett did. Jango Fett was trained strictly as a Mandalorian, whereas Boba Fett was not. So Boba Fett had obviously very minimal training under his father. Um, because Django was killed when Boba was still a, <coughs> a young child. And um, that being said, he also had mentors in the likes of Aura Singh, an extremely ruthless bounty hunter. Um, Cad Bane, who is another extremely capable but also very ruthless bounty hunter, uh, along with some others like, <coughs> excuse me, Bosk, Dengar, uh, people like that who um, also influenced him in a lot of ways. So he had a lot more... Di diversity in his influences as a bounty hunter and <coughs> excuse me um and that being said he was therefore i would say a lot more ruthless than jango fett just because jango fett lived by the mandalorian codex boba didn't do that quite as much that being said boba did live by a sort of personal code of honor where he tried not to harm people that didn't already harm him uh which we get to see a little bit in in the clone wars but that being said boba um was extremely ruthless i mean if darth vader has to tell you to kind of take a step back like hey man don't disintegrate any people okay um i mean that should tell you something about about the caliber of, of individual that we're dealing with so i know that he was obviously up to scuff uh up, or up to snuff enough to uh get hired by the empire uh, in order to hunt down han solo and <coughs> the rest of the rebels um so that for for those reasons he's obviously very impressive i know that he also um is very uh prominent when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat we see that uh in a lot of the the comic books that i'm not super familiar with and i'm trying not to let my my thoughts on the book of boba fett as a show uh bleed into this because i know we're talking about them in their prime but all in all i've talked in a, in a big circle here but i would probably say that at the end of the day, Jango Fett would probably be a more capable fighter um, just because the Mandalorians were the warrior religion in the galaxy. I think okay. that Boba Fett is probably a little scrappier. He probably would play a little dirtier than Jango would in his prime. Um, but that being said, Jango Fett is really OP. And we don't have as much information about Jango Fett in canon, but in Legends, he is very, very OP, as is Boba. But Django is able to kill like an, an entire group of Jedi, save Count Dooku, who's one of the most powerful Jedi ever. So um, if, if you're just going off of stuff like that, I don't think Boba really stands up to that sort of achievement. So I would say all this to say, 
I think that Django Fett would win um, against Boba. That ends my answer. <laughs> well, that does not leave me much to say. Um, I yeah. also would think that Django Fett would win because since, like, obviously Boba Fett, as you said, had so many mentors of of such great bounty hunters such as Cad Bane, Aura Singh, Bosk, Dengar, those kinds of people. And Bo a little bit, not really. But um, just, you can't beat a true, like, Mandalorian who's, like, always always been a Mandalorian, as you said, like, the literal ultimate warriors. And also, as you said, like, <laughs> like, Jango killed so many Jedi on his own. And Boba, while he didn't necessarily have a chance to, I don't think ever really reached that caliber. So, yeah, I just... I, I, I thought that Jango would win as well. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And we can... I, I'm going to say let's let's table any further discussion until the end yeah. um, or maybe another episode where we kind of dissect this episode. Um, but uh, but for now, I'd say... Twin we're, Sun we're Talks good. reacts. <laughs> exactly. Twin Sun Talks reacts to Twin Sun Talks. Um. <laughs> That being said, we good to move on to, to mine. Oh, yeah. Because this is lasting longer. I talked for a lot longer than I was expecting to. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so mine that Jeb's going to answer is who would win in a Both fight between... Sorry. Yes. Well, Jeb's going to answer first. Uh, who would win in a fight between Kylo Ren and Savage Opress? Okay. So Kylo Ren is... Let's see. Let me think about this. Okay, I'll start with Savage. So Savage was not originally force sensitive, if I'm not mistaken. He um Count Dooku once he got Savage kind of used anger and hatred or to kind of force the force out of him, kind of. And He's also altered by the Night Sisters, so he get not only gets the wisdom and the power of the Sith, like Kanduku and Darth Maul. He also gets all of the power and the magic of the Night Sisters. Kylo Ren, on the other hand, is a direct descendant of the Chosen One, and already is very, fairly proficient in the Force, even though with his minimal training not so not as quite as good with the lightsaber but still pretty good and kylo ren also is one half of a dyad in the force so i think that kylo would win unfortunately okay that's fair is is that it or are you 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 good i'm i'm trying to think of anything else i can't i can't really think of anything else okay no i i completely agree so um i i i agree with with a lot of what you said but that being said uh if i'm just comparing the two i all of what you said is, is correct so savage is is kind of an augmented being which is something to consider and um and Ben Solo, Kylo Ren is a direct descendant, or not a direct descendant, but he is a descendant of the Chosen One. So he's from part of the Skywalker bloodline. Yeah. So between the two, Kylo is more powerful in the Force uh, because of the aforementioned reasons where um, he's a descendant of the Chosen One and Savage was kind of an, an augmented being. He was kind of, His power was kind of forged by both the Night Sisters and his training under Dooku. But that being said, I think Savage is probably the better fighter and duelist. Um, and Kylo is really only seen fighting the likes of like Rey and the Knights of Ren, which I don't feel like gives the best context to like gauge his power. Um, but he did kind of like he 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 was he was on the ropes against Finn, <laughs> who's a stormtrooper <laughs> who had never wielded a lightsaber. Regardless yeah. of how injured he was, Finn was able to kind of go toe to toe with him, which I think is something to consider when you when you're uh, determining how proficient he is in battle. Um, Savage was able to hold his own against the likes of Dooku, Ventress, Sidious, 
Obi Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, and Eddie Gallia, and two um, other Jedi that and, and, killed he, without a lightsaber and any force ability. Exactly, um, he killed Eddie Gallia, who's who's a, a member the of the Jedi, Jedi Master. Council. Yeah, um, and so I think this fight comes down to who can act faster because Savage's aggressive and brutal tactics um, would likely Impulsive. overwhelm Kylo. Uh, before he could get any sort of upper hand because Kylo, interesting thing, is capable of using the Force to effectively immobilize and incapacitate his opponents, but he never uses this in combat. Um, We never see him use it in combat. No. Um, So based on Kylo's lack of prowess with a saber and the simple dominating power of Savage, and for those of you who haven't watched The Clone Wars, um, Savage is uh, a Zabrak warrior from Dathomir, so the same same species uh, as Darth Maul, um, who is kind of trained as an assassin under Dooku. Um, and he's a very cool character. Would watch the Clone Wars if you haven't already and, and get to know him a little bit better. But um, because of just the sheer dominance that Savage has in battle, I think that it's pretty safe to say that Savage would actually win this fight. Um, okay. In That'll be opinion. interesting to see how all of the other people think about that so most definitely and i'm gonna it's kind of ad- you don't have the, the same answer this time <laughs> most definitely and I, i'm gonna address like the the transcript of our answers when i send them out for yeah to account for whatever um i i, I don't want to give away who answered first yeah and and stuff like that and, and so I'm, I'm gonna kind of take those out and if, if i ever butt in with jeb or if jeb ever butts in with me i'm gonna kind of edit around those and i'm gonna consult with jeb whenever before i send them out uh, just yeah. to make sure that it's fair but that being said, rock off <laughs> again for who goes first on this okay. second question. Okay. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, paper, scissors shoot. Got it. Okay. Okay. Jeb, Jeb put Played rock, rock. Yeah. and Jonah put paper. Good. I'm good job. kind of having trouble with my own name right now. So that's very fair. <laughs> yeah. uh, I am going to elect to go first this time. So we're going okay. to be doing military strategy. These are going to be longer questions. And honestly, this, this is already taking a lot for a lot is, longer than I thought. This it is would. going a lot longer than I thought it was would too, but I hope people are enjoying this conversation. Hopefully. Um, so that being said, Jeb, you ready? Yeah. You are a Jedi giving command of 20 clone troopers against 75 Trandoshan hunters. Okay. You are tasked with defending a colony of farmers in the jungles of Felucia. Mm-hmm. The hunters are being led by Garnot, sorry, Ganark, who yeah. is the Trandoshan leader from the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. And they have your settlement surrounded except for a secluded and overgrown supply route through a nearby mountain. Okay. Excluding ARC troopers and commandos, what clone battalion would you take? and give an outline of how you would protect the farmers. Note, you may not select specific clones from the battalion you choose, only generic soldiers based on the battle experience and specializations of the given battalion. Airstrikes and bombardments are not possible, You have, but you have the possibility for an extraction, but not from your current position. Not from the current position? No. So you can... So what's the what are you trying to do? Get the Trandoshans out uh, to kill the Trandoshans or to get them? You are you are defending the farmers. The farmers. So you are okay. defending the farmers. However, you choose to do that is up to you. So like I can like just like take the farmers all away if you chose to. Yes. To, okay. Okay. So that that could be an option. That could be an option. Any other so questions before we? Can I on? ask? I don't know what legion <laughs> what the legion is called, but can I ask what they're called? Yeah. Grees legion what are they called the 41st elite corps the 44 so okay so i would choose the 44th elite corps because they have um felucia is if i'm not mistaken a pretty like jungly world like even though it doesn't look very much like kashik but the 44 44th elite legion right 40, 41st elite corps 41st elite corps in his art is i believe like good at the jungle things because they were in charge of kashik the battle of kashik and that the like very end of the clone wars so i would choose them and um so transitions are surrounding the city 75 i have 20 yes 
there's like one path. There is only one path of escape that the Drandoshans have not taken over, and it's a secluded supply route through the mountains. Through the mountains. Through. As in like a tunnel. Okay, that's kind of sus. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. No, um, good. Bro. So airstrikes are not possible. Airstrikes are not possible. This is harder than I think. Do you want me to text you all the stuff? Yes, please. Um, but uh, I I would say. Okay, okay, I got, I got it, I've got it. So you, I'm just calling an evac here. So you get all the farmers, you get all of your clone troopers. The farmers, you kind of just like put them in the middle of you. How many farmers are there? It's a full settlement. So full settlement. So it's like think think about the the episode of the Clone Wars where um, with the bounty hunters, mm-hmm. that, those are Felucian farmers. Yes. So I would say somewhere between like thirty and fifty. Thirty and fifty. Okay. So um, I'll just go with thirty. So you put all of them. In between they're pretty small so they can all fit so like and then you storm through into the um tunnel and then as you're going along you're leaving bombs behind you and then and then you just kind of go there's a, a bunch of gunships waiting for you at the end of the tunnel and then right as you get out you blow the tunnel and then all of the Trandoshans are stuck okay that's Fair what enough. i say cool okay I'm I'm kind of upset because I was also going to choose the forty first elite corps, but since you did it, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna change my tactic a little bit just to to make it interesting. Okay. So, because I think the forty first elite corps is probably the best best option, yep. but I'm gonna choose the three hundred twenty seventh star corps, which is um, Caddy Money's, right? No. So those are the those are the Galactic Marines, uh, okay. the three hundred twenty seventh star corps Ala Secura's clones. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. So. That being oh, said, I choose Felicia. Yes. I choose the 327th Star Corps, who are the clones with the yellow demarcations that you see in Revenge of the Sith, but you also see them a little bit in the Clone Wars. Um, because they specialize in quick mobilization and excel in long campaigns um, in hostile environments. And so you and they have experience on Felucia, as you can see in Revenge of the Sith, uh, whenever they execute Order 66 against Ala Secura. They're on Felucia, so they they have experience with the terrain. They know the environment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so as far as my plan of defense, like I said, Felucia is a very hostile environment. It has very unruly terrain, uh, but it also has a lot of very aggressive fauna and flora in the shape of large animals, rancors, stuff like that. Um, as far as my plan of defense, I would send five of my troopers. Uh, with the population, we're saying about 30 um, farmers. And I would send five of them um, with the population down the secluded supply route. So my assumption here is that since it's a supply route, it would lead to some sort of shipyard or developed area uh, wherever they're uh, exchanging goods uh, for whenever they're farming, right? Um, And this would provide either an opportunity for an airlift or some cover from the hunters at the very least if they do end up being pursued i would then rally my remaining forces and place them in strategic positions around the settlement um where they they have views of the perimeter i would have at least two watching the entrance of the supply route to make sure that no hunters are getting through (coughs) and uh and then i would also have one of them have a detonator for bombs that have been placed along the entrance of, of the supply route tunnel. Um, I will then leave myself in the open as bait because I know that Ganark has bloodlust against Jedi. He has a very uh, interesting obsession with Jedi. He wants to kill them. He sees it as a sort of point of pride if he's able to kill Jedi. Um, so I know that he'll want to take me out personally and it will draw attention away from anything else that's happening. With the hunters lurking in the trees, my troops will provide cover fire as the farmers make their way to the entrance of the supply route. And after the entire population, as well as my five troops, 
uh, have entered that tunnel, I, my man will detonate uh, the explosives uh, and block the mouth of the root, ensuring that the Trandoshans are not able to follow. Um, all that's left is for me to stay focused because Trandoshans are very crafty and good at getting their prey. And if I don't keep my mind sharp, um, I know that I can easily get taken out by a sniper from the trees or something like that. So as long as I remain focused in this situation as a Jedi, I think I should be all right. Um, and I'll remain on the ground level as sort of a first line of defense against any hunters that may come into the settlement with my, uh, troops up in the, uh, settlement <coughs> in the buildings of the settlement as sort of strategic, um, in strategic positions to be able to pick off any transitions that come through the trees, any that they miss, I'll take care of. Um, and in this situation, I think the best case scenario is we're all, we're able to fend off, uh, all the hunters and the farmers uh, will be returned to their homes once uh, we, we've made sure that the threat is eliminated. Worst case scenario is that the Trandoshans overrun us, kill my men and myself, but at least the farmers uh, make it to safety and are able to be evacuated. So that is my move. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I hope the people are still listening after that. <laughs> Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm here to win. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Why don't you read yours? Let's just say that mine is not very, um, like, advanced. It's not no, like good. that. Okay. So, you are a clone commander in control of a regiment of 20 clones against a super tactical droid with two Magna Guards, 10 B1 battle droids, and four droidicas. They're holding a city hostage, and they have planted bombs around the city. You have one hour to defeat all of the battle droids and defuse all the bombs. Which regiment will we pick? And you get to choose which city it's in, what kind of city it's in. It has to okay. be a city that we know. Interesting. Okay. Uh, could you send me that? Because that's a lot of numbers, and I'm not going to remember all of them. Um, <coughs> but yeah. uh, how? sorry, how many clones am I in charge of as a clone commander? 12? I, I, 20. 20, sorry. 20? Okay. Yeah. Um. And then I'm against super tactical droid, two magna guards, a droid, uh, four droidicas. I'm just gonna wait until you send it to me. But yeah. uh, I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna it try. It says to think twelve on the screenshot. I meant to put twenty. Okay, that's okay. We can do twelve if you want. It doesn't have to be twenty. No. Um, 20. Okay. <laughs> but um. But let's see. Um, control regiment. Of 12, 20 clones against super tactical droid, two magna guards, 10 B1 battle droids, and four droidicas, holding a city hostage and have planted bombs around the city. Okay, interesting. So I'm going to choose, let's say, the the colony of Kiros, uh, the, which are the Tegrutan colonists uh, from the slaver arc of the Clone Wars. Uh, just because we've seen a similar situation uh, where there are bombs planted around the city. You have one arm to one hour to defeat all the battle droids and defuse the bombs. So and FYI, you don't know where the bombs are. You don't know where the bombs are? No. Okay. So can I ask a question? Yes. So the 212 has the bomb squad. If I'm I know I'm not allowed to say any specific clones, but am I allowed to say do I have to say the 212th and just hope that I get the bomb squad, or can I say the bomb squad specifically? That's what I was gonna do. <laughs> well that's okay. Um with that being said, I well, which is it? Can I say the 212th or do I have to say the bomb squad? You can say the bomb squad because okay. I was going to say the bomb squad. I'm going to call on the bomb squad of the 212th attack battalion because they specialize in the uh, diffusion of um, explosive devices. And so basically if I have 20 and there are, do, do we know how many bombs there are? Because that's, um, that's not specified. We can say 10. Okay, there are 10 bombs. So I'm going to say, since there are four droidicas, 10 B1 battle droids, four magna guards. Magna guards are going to be tricky to deal with with, uh, with, with only clones. But what I'm going to say is I'm going to, do, I'm going to commit all of my forces to finding the bombs first. Uh, I'm going to say break up into groups of two. So there are two clones per bomb. We're going to sweep the city. That means that there are smaller groups, less likely that the droids will 
uh, find us. That being said, once we do a sweep, find all the bombs, then it's just a matter of how we're going to uh, eliminate the droids. So I think that the Magna Guards are around the, su- the, the super tactical droid, yes? Yes. Um, so that's going to be a little difficult. I say take out the B1 battle droids first. That's just going to be easy. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of a bloodbath. I'm going to assume that I'm going to lose at least three clones in that Since in that it's effort. It's just the bomb squad. It's not Since the it's just the bomb squad. Bomb. Exactly. Um, that being said, uh, most clone outfits are equipped with droid poppers. Am I allowed to uh, assume that I have those? Yes. So droidicas are very susceptible to droid poppers as long as you are trained to throw them the correct way. That being said, I think that most clones would be able to pull that off. So all you need is four droid poppers to take out the droidicas. Their shields are going to be down. You take them out that way before they can reboot. Uh, Droid poppers, for those of you who don't know, are just little EMP bombs that essentially render droids useless for for a short amount of time. Uh, But after those go off... I don't think that droid poppers are super effective against uh, higher functioning droids like Magna Guards no. or super tactical droids. So that being said, uh, operating under the assumption that I still have probably somewhere between 15 and 17 clones left, uh, it's just a matter of hopefully taking the enemy by surprise. If I can take down one Magna Guard and get their Electro Staff, I think that I could af- realistically take down the other Magna Guard and then we we could take down the super tactical droid pretty easily as long as we got both of those uh, by surprise. But I think realistically, we only get one of the Magna Guards by surprise. But if we can headshot him and take out its central processing unit, I think we'll be okay. And at that point, we've, we've accomplished what we've been there to do. So, uh, what kind what of city you were you at? Uh, Kiros. Kiros, you're in Kiros, okay. And so that, so that has a lot of interesting art, uh, like architecture and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, but anyways, yeah. Jeb, go for Very it. Very beautiful city. Okay, so <coughs> uh, excuse me. Um, I would also choose the 212 bomb squad. Um, I would choose to be in a Mandalorian city because Mandalore is, especially the capital city, is made up of almost all glass. So it'll be very, it'll be quite easy to find the bombs. And, um, so I would, um, first try to go take out all of the droids, because I think that it'd be very difficult with just clones to sneak up on a super tactical droid. We've seen what super tactical droids can do. They're not very easy to trick. Um, so as you said, I would assume that the super tactical droid would have the two Magna Guards around it. So I would, um, we've seen the 212, not necessarily the bomb squad, but we've seen the 212, like, kind of almost take down Grievous for a little bit. And so I would, I'm just assuming that um, some of them are being held at the same caliber for being part of the 212, but that's just what I'm assuming. So I feel like they could fairly easily take down at least one, get the, um, Electro staff and take down the other one. Um, at that point, this, the other droids would have been there. Those could have been taken out pretty easily. As you said, droid poppers, droid because, or just regular explosives. You can take those down pretty easily. And then um, you just take the bombs after. All righty. Good stuff. Okay. So we are two sets of questions down. Uh, let's do one last rock, paper, scissors to see who goes uh, first. I'm going to say let's not both say it at the same time because there was a delay last two times that we did that, so I'm just going to say it. Okay, ready? It wasn't delayed for me. Yeah, well, that's because I'm the host and you're not. Yeah, okay, ready? Three, uh, two, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Take that. Yeah. Jeb put rock, Jonah put scissors. Jeb, rock, Jonah, scissor. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to like to start. Okay, go for it. So wait, what's what's this type of question again? To the sorry, yeah. So this type of question is a sort of a, a controversial take. So essentially, this is a, a point of contention within the Star Wars community, and we are going to either advocate for it or uh, argue against it. So yeah, 
Okay. So I would, um, what I ask is, what are your thoughts on Lucasfilm trying to make the dyad in the force the reason for the roll of two? Oh boy, where do I start? Okay, <laughs> one second, guys. First of all, I have an entire episode about this. I don't remember where it is, but it's back. Uh, you can say you can, it's it's rule of two. It's like the the Darth Bane trilogy review and rule of two or and Disney rant or something like that. I think it's back close to my fiftieth episode. It's a good episode. But, uh, I, trust me, I, I I do enjoy my rants. I don't have. I, I know that I'm gonna miss some stuff off the top of my head. So go ahead and listen to that if you haven't already. But um, but that being said, I think it is one of the dumbest and most irresponsible things that they could do. Uh, so this happened in the uh, Star Wars book called Secrets of the Sith, and it essentially uh, made the the rule of two uh, a di- about a, a dyad in the Force. So the rule of two is the uh, philosophy uh, pioneered by Darth Bane that essentially um, there would only be two Sith at a time, a master to uh, kind of embody power and an apprentice to crave it. And this book sort of altered the lore to make it so that a dyad was the inspiration for a rule of two. There are a lot of issues with that, but I'll explain what a dyad is. And um, in Rise of Skywalker, yeah, Rise of Skywalker thank you. Um, Kylo and Rey are said to have a special connection called a dyad. And essentially what this connection uh, allows them to do is essentially it is two that are one. And they are able to uh, kind of read each other's thoughts. They are able to communicate with each other across great distances. They are able to uh, very minimally affect the environment that each of them are standing in. And almost like they're two people occupying the same space, right? And so it's this kind of interesting concept of like a, a very strong force bond uh, between a sort of opposing uh, figure. So it's a Skywalker and a so a uh, Skywalker and a Palpatine is kind of the idea of this. Um, but that being said, Disney tried is trying to push the idea that that is the uh, sort of the pursuit of the rule of two is to create a dyad, sort of artificially create a dyad to achieve ultimate power. Now, there are a lot of things wrong with that, but I'm going to focus in on one thing, and that, that is that the Sith are inherently very, very uh, selfish individuals. That being said, they're not going to want to share power with anybody. So the concept of the Sith pursuing uh, shared power where they're, they're reliant on another person to achieve this ultimate power, which seems to be confined to only like teleporting objects over large distances and communicating over large distances. It doesn't seem to be that impressive other than the force healing bit and also but what sith is going to want to force heal especially if they have to rely on someone else like if that was their secret to immortality then sure but it, it altogether is, is a direct contradiction of the sith philosophy which is inherent inherently very selfish and very self-serving and for those reasons i think it is one of the for dumbest those reasons things. i'm out exactly I think it's one of the dumbest things because it's literally like, it is just, it's like, okay, why is this concept of the dyad never come up before? And they're like, oh, it's the rule of two. It's like, what are you doing? You could have made this really interesting. I think that, honestly, I think that was one of the more interesting parts of Rise of Skywalker. And then they went and ruined it trying to backtrack and like kind of put a bandaid on a bullet hole. And it's like, you're, you're messing everything Shout up. Shout out, Mark uh, Yeah, I guess. Um, <laughs> that being said, uh, I was gonna say Taylor Swift. Band aids don't fix bullet holes. Um, Try and put a band aid on a bullet hole. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> that cool. is my answer. What is yours? Um. Uh, yeah, it it's pretty stupid. Um, as you said, like the Sith. Kind of speaking to what you said, like even earlier, like the. Master embodies power, and the apprentice basically embodies a lust for power. And so, like, basically the rule of succession is for the apprentice to become the master, the apprentice kills the master. So why would you want to have a, have that happen if you want a dyad? Because if you have a dyad, then, like, you don't want to kill the other person because then that would just defeat the entire purpose of what you were trying to do 100 percent, yeah and also like 
speaking to what you said about the force healing, I'm pretty sure that like the force healing, you kind of need to like breathe like your own force essence into the other person. Yeah. So you would be draining your own power into the other person. Like what, Mm -hmm. what, what Sith would want that? No one, no one. I can tell you no one. (laughs) So like, I just, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just such lazy little like, oh no, we're, we're right. This is just how it is now. We're just going to completely disrespect and throw away everything that was here before. And we're just going to make it our own. Yep. This is so much better. Oh. Yeah. And so, no. yeah. No, I completely agree. It's, it's very frustrating. And, um, and yeah, I agree with the statement. It's disrespectful. It's really, it's really bad. Um, yeah. That being said, do you have anything else to say, or are you done? No, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll go into mine then. So, my question. Oh, I is, forgot. There's another one. Yeah, it's me. Um, <laughs> some say that Sidious allowed Mace Windu to beat him in order to put Anakin in a position to betray the Jedi. Do you think? When do you actually beat Sidious, or do you believe that Sidious let him get the upper hand? Well, let's see. <clears throat> now that I'm thinking about this a little bit more, I do believe that Palpatine let Windu get the upper hand at the end, at least. So, so... I'm not saying that, like, for the entire time he let him get the upper hand, because I do believe that, like, for most of it, Windu was actually holding his own pretty well, like, really well. Yeah. And was, like, like standing up and, like, being Palpatine's equal. But I think that at the very end, like, by the window, Palpatine was like, oh, this is a good opportunity. Because, as we know from all the other movies, he is literally a mastermind playing... And he single-handedly created a war a on a galactic scale yeah so you know that he has to be thinking ahead in every single situation Most and has simple. to be going through every single possible scenario so then i think that he saw the opportunity to use that as <clears throat> excuse me kind of bait for anakin to lure him to his side because while he was also like electrocuting himself, he kind of let. He was kind of saying, "Oh, what what about democracy or whatever?" And the blah blah blah. Anakin was saying that in his Hayden Christensen way, <laughs> and so, yeah, I I do I do think that Palpatine let Windu kind of be defeating him at the end. Fair enough. No, and honestly, thinking about this more. Slightly unfair question because Windu is my favorite character and I know a lot about him. Um, and I've thought about this question quite a bit, but that's why I asked it because I think it's a very interesting question. Super um, interesting. Super, and it, very deep, <laughs> deep thought. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. That being said, I'd like to establish just facts for, first. So this is me answering the question. Okay. Windu is a master of a Form 7 variant called Vipod. Sidious mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat. Sidious was also able to kill three Jedi Masters very easily in a matter of seconds. All very skilled, very trained. On a superficial level, it seems like Windu wins. So those are like the, the, the truths that I'm operating under when I make these, these statements. That being said, Vapod, Windu's lightsaber fighting style, which he developed himself with some other uh, Jedi Masters, uh, Specifically, a weak way one that I'm I'm blanking on the name. I don't remember um, the name either. But he fell to the dark side. It was the whole thing. Yeah. Um. But the pod, more than just fighting style, was also a state of mind, and moreover, it was a path that walked the line between light and dark. And Count Dooku actually said that it was a very ineffective and uh, inefficient lightsaber fighting style, and very limited because uh, most of the users were Jedi and didn't fall to the dark side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so for that reason it was like since they weren't utilizing the dark side it was actually very uh sort of bridled and short-sighted 
Sorry, I will have cut out that audio, but my microphone like started falling. I looked up at the screen and my microphone was like at my chest. Um, so I'm just going to restate what I just said. So essentially, since uh, Vapod acts as a sort of channel or river between uh, anybody who's partaking in a duel with someone that uses Vapod, and since Sidious was so powerful in the dark side of the Force, Windu was able to sort of redirect that darkness back at Palpatine. And sort of create like uh, a continuous like feedback loop of sorts, um, cycling the Sith Lord's own darkness back against him in the form of Windu's attacks. Um, and I know that in the novelization of the the Revenge of the Sith, I, I know that I haven't actually read it, but I've I've seen some excerpts, and it said that these two were like blindingly fast, like that you could not make out what was happening. It was a blur of red and purple, and it was just super, super intense. You really couldn't tell what was going on whenever Anakin came and was and was witnessing the battle himself. Um, and that being said, while Vapod took a, a great amount of energy and discipline to uh, put into practice, Windu was able to basically use Sidious's power reserves without dipping into his own. So he was essentially using up Sidious's power before he even began to use his own aside from actually what he was using to uh, remain focused, remain engaged in the battle. Um, and he was also, according to Dooku, utilizing Vapod to its fullest extent because he was drawing on Sidious's darkness without actually falling to the dark side himself. Mm -hmm. And so Windu was really at his most powerful during that duel because his power is essentially proportional in lightsaber combat to the darkness or the power of his opponent because he's able to cycle it back at them, right? And so I agree that an argument can be made that Palpatine sensed Anakin's approach and through the fight to kind of put him in a position to betray the Jedi. But I think that he was actually bested in this fight with Windu having mastered a pod too perfectly for Sidious to counter. And I think that Sidious kind of was at the end of his rope, and I think he got a bit lucky that Anakin showed up when he did. More more so the will of the Force than luck, because obviously this was kind of how it was supposed to go. Windu was kind of the embodiment of Jedi arrogance at the time. The Jedi were not. They had fallen from the light that they had sworn to protect, kind of like Barisafi had said mm -hmm. um, when she was brought before uh, the courts. <coughs> um, but that being said, I think that there was a lot of an element of luck or at least sort of a supernatural supernatural uh, interference on the forces part to have Anakin present at the time uh, in time to essentially save Sidious because I think Windu was very ready to kill him. Um, and that being said, all in all, I think that Windu did in fact beat Palpatine. And I think that he would have either way, even if even if he did throw that fight at the very end, I think that Windu would have come out on top had the fight continued the way that it was was continuing. But I still think that he won regardless of that statement. That is the end of my answer. Yeah, even after that, I still completely disagree because like Sidious is literally the most powerful Sith Lord to ever live, yeah. ever. And I think that that's why I think that that made Windu... But I don't think that... Mace Windu could even draw on even a fraction of that power without turning to the dark side himself. Like, I don't care if he's using Palpatine's dark side energy. Like, there's just no way. But the, but the fact of the matter is he's not using it. He's, he's essentially holding up a mirror. And it's like... Yeah, he's I don't care if he's directing it on himself. Fire. Like, I just... I... There's just no way. There's just no way that he could I disagree. Ever. Dude. personally because it's not yeah, like because he's... you're the most biased person <laughs> ever nice yeah but i <coughs> i mean none of this is going to be in the answer section but um i mean hey yeah, me saying that you're, you're the most biased person ever yeah that's two beeps now that's gonna be fun for me to do in post good for you um but uh but yeah no i mean i just completely disagree and that's okay um, but yeah. that being said, those are all the questions. Um, and we're going to uh, take a break now 
uh, we're gonna I'm gonna take some time to transcribe all these messages, and then we're going to send them off to everyone who's gonna vote on them. They're all gonna be completely anonymous. We're not gonna tell anybody who wrote the questions or who answered when, um, and that's all gonna take me quite a while, but um, that's okay. And uh, we'll record this again in a couple days to uh, see what the results are. So uh, signing off, it'll be a couple seconds for y'all, but it'll be a few days for us. Alrighty, so we are back. It's a few days later. Um, and we've got the, the votes in. So I sent it out to all 11 other people who have been on the podcast. All That's 11 a lot of people. It is. And they all casted all six votes for all the questions. I gave transcriptions, uh, slightly altered. Wait just... a second. Huh? Does that make 66 votes? Yes, technically. Ah. Good call. Good call indeed. Um, but yeah, so I sent out transcriptions that were a little different than what we actually said on here, but that was mainly to, to take out any interactions that we might have had with each other or any of the times that I like did a podcast thing and explained what a thing was. Um and stuff like that. But um, that being said, I'm just going to go through pretty quick because this episode's already gone on a lot longer than, than I intended it to. And so I appreciate y'all sticking through. Uh, and I know that y'all just want to hear, hear what happened and get, get on with your lives. So that being said, uh, for question number one, I won pretty, pretty, pretty handily. What was number um, one? Number one was Django versus Boba. Oh, okay. Question number two, I also won. Um, That's that was uh, that was Savage versus Kylo, um, and um, question number three. I also won. Yeah. Um, that was the military one. That was my military one. On the Trandoshan one or whatever. Yes. Um, question number four. I unfortunately also won. So yeah, that's okay. already Woo-hoo, yay. But question number five, you did win, Jeb. Which one was that? That was Dyad. Oh, okay. um, Dyad, you won. And then question number six was also really, really close. Um, I I only won six to five. Uh, Which on one was that one? That was Windu versus uh, Sidious. Oh, um, that's stupid. So the last four were all actually pretty, pretty close. Um. So your your military one and the two the two controversy ones were were, were pretty yeah. close. And I and, apologize um, for getting really heated at the end. Not to you, Jonah, but to the <laughs> viewers. So Yeah. Yeah. Of course. No, that's fair. It's, it's it's it happens. It's all good. But um but that said, I've already thought of uh I think how I'm gonna do this in the future. Uh for anybody who's listening who might be uh up to challenging me moving forward. I think that what I'm going to do is have the challenger bring three questions to me and they can have as much time as they want or not as much time, but they, they have the ability to prep for these questions. Uh, and I don't, so we only have three questions. There's still two answers per question. And we do the same format where I send them out and let other people vote on it. But, um, that way, a, it doesn't take near as long because this was, this is a hefty episode and B. Yeah. Um, it, it also provides an advantage to the person that's challenging and puts yeah. me at a disadvantage. So, and for people who don't know, like my brother had, my brother Jonah obviously had um planned these out for how long? Do you think? I mean, not like not super long. I mean, yeah, but you had more time than like I I made all three of those that day. All three that day? You had, had yes. a couple of days. Yeah, but I made all of them that day. Yeah, that's fair. Um, to be fair, we had talked about it for a while. Yeah, but I, I did just never had any time that's to fair. do anything like that. No, so. that's that's fair. Um, but no, but this is an experiment. Happy hundredth episode. Uh, mm-hmm. it was a fun time, and hope how you all long does this episode end up being? Like, it's probably going to be close to an hour, probably okay. like fifty minutes or so. So it's like an ability to speak. Yeah, I mean, I can't really tell because it's in like three chunks. So it's kind of tough for me to tell. Um, yeah, as of right now. But hopefully, y'all enjoyed. I'm not going to do a more. Uh, this is just kind of all one big rank of master. 
I have retained my crown of Grandmaster, but I'm sure that Jeb will be back on soon enough. And or we'll... someone else. Who or knows? someone else. You are the only master as of right now, so someone's going to need to get master and then come back on the podcast. So it's going to be easiest for you to do it. Since um, I live in the same household. Yeah. But that being said, I'm not going to have you slated for a rank of master or for a ability to speak for a while. So, so it's going to mm-hmm. be good. But um, yeah. But yeah, all that to say, this was fun. Thank you all so much for sticking with me for 100 episodes. Thank you to everyone who's been here through all 100. Thank you to those of you who just got here. But um, h- however you heard about me, however you know me, I, I'm thankful for every single one of y'all. Thankful for you, Jeb. You've, you've contributed most out of any one of the guests on this of podcast. Course, of course. Always really a pleasure. appreciate that. And um, yeah, all that to say, uh, can't wait for 100 more. And that's about it. You've taken your first steps into a larger world. May the force be with you, and I'll see y'all in the next episode. It's the Kenobi final f- finale. Oh, dang. Keep that in mind. Yeah, no, big stuff. I just got out of my rhythm. I got to do it again. You've taken your first steps <laughs> into a larger world. May the force be with you, and I'll see y'all in the next episode. Bye, friends. <laughs>